All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a seven question warm up. Today is this January 4th, second day back after a long hiatus. We have seven warm up questions from reachbacks to previously learned material, and we have multiple choice today, which seems like it's going to be easier. The first question gives us a one, two, three, four, five, six term polynomial. And it says, when simplified, what will this become? So what we have to really understand here is we have to gather like terms. So if I look at my x's, if I combine those two x's with these two negative x's, what you're supposed to understand is that's going to make an algebraic zero pair, and therefore it'll become zero. When you combine a negative 3 and a f negative 1, you get negative 4. A negative 4 combined with a positive 4 also makes 0. And therefore, there is only one term left, the negative x squared. And therefore, when simplified, your answer for this particular question is it will become a monomial. Your second question from rational numbers, square roots of fractions. It says the square root of 16 64th is, and it gives you four choices. So in order to understand what this is asking, you have to understand that this means, the square root symbol means, if I said that what's the square root of 16, it means what number multiplied by itself gives you 16. And in this case, the answer would be 4. So the square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 4 is 2, etc., etc. Square root of 9 is 3. For the square root of a fraction, we learned what fraction when multiplied by itself is 16 64ths. What number multiplied by itself is 16? The answer is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. What number multiplied by itself is 64? It's 8 by 8. And therefore, the square root of 16 64ths is 4 eighths. But Harkin, let's not forget that that is also not in lowest terms. In lowest terms, 4 eighths, of course, is 1 half. And therefore, ergo, your answer for question two is the square root of 16 64ths is 1 half. Question three, also from the chapter on rational numbers, we have an order of operations question involving uh, rational numbers in decimal form. We have two operations. We have an addition and we have a multiplication, and hopefully by grade nine, you have learned that you have to follow uh, order of operations in order to simplify uh, mathematical expressions with more than one operation. So 1.2 times 3, the reason why I said we can do this without a calculator is because 1.2 times 3, everyone in grade 9 should be able to get 3.6. And if you can't, you can think of it as being $1.20 multiplied by 3 to get $3.60, acknowledging that the 0 in $3.60 is insignificant, so we could just call it 3.6. So in your work, you'll have negative 3.6 plus a positive 3.6. And when we're combining negative and positives, we have to say, what do we have more? If we have more negatives, how many more negatives do we have? Well, in order to say answer that question, how many more negatives we have, we have to actually subtract to figure out how many more negatives we have. We have one more negative than positive. And therefore, our answer is negative 1, or A. Another way to think of it is you owe $4.60, and you have $3.60. When you pay off as much of the debt as you can, you're still going to owe a dollar. And therefore, it's still negative one. Question four comes from our last chapter on polynomials, addition of polynomials. We have a trinomial subtracting a binomial. And we should know that the easiest way to subtract is to actually add the inverse. So instead of uh, subtracting 4x plus 2, we're going to add negative 4x, and we're going to add the opposite of the other one, which is negative 2. That comes from our chapter uh, in grade 7 on integers. Adding the opposite still has the same. Uh, the difference of 1 is the same as the sum of its opposite. So when we look at it this way, 3x squared will combine with no other term, so we're going to have 3x squared by itself. A negative 2x and a negative 4x added together will become a negative 6x. And a positive 1 and a negative 2 make it negative 1, and therefore, our answer for the fourth question is A. Question 5, the diagonal 
is diagonal spelt right? It looks wrong, doesn't it? Does it look right to you? Diagonal. Anyway, whatever. So hopefully, all of y'all was smart enough to actually draw it. And you drew your rectangle. It says a 10 by 5 rectangle. The diagonal is approximately how long? What this was really asking you is, do you understand that this question is just a Pythagoras question? I didn't say use Pythagoras to solve, but hopefully you understood that, hey, hang on a second, I have a skill. I can solve this with Pythagoras. This is 100. This is 25. The area of this square attached to the diagonal, or the hypotenuse, is 125. So the area of the square is 125, and I'll bet you some people thought, I'm done now. These my answer. But they would have been wrong. Because the actual length of it is the square root of 125. And since the square root of 121 is 11, the square root of 125 has to be closer to 11 than any other guess up on that board. And therefore, it's approximately... 11. So the actual the actual uh, size of it, the square root of 125. Ooh, my calculator looks different. Does it? Or is it just me? Huh. It's 11.2, but it's still close enough to say that it's approximately 11. Just get no. Question six. Uh, four cubed times four to the fifth divided by four to the sixth. Yes, you could work it out. Yes, you could say 4 cubed 4 to the exponent of 3 is 64. You could have done that. Well, that's not a marker. You could have done that 64 times, and then you could say, well, what's 4 to the 5? 4 to the exponent of 5 is 1,024 divided by, and then you say, well, what's 4 to the power of 6? You could actually do that. 4 to the power of 6, and you get 4,096. And then you're like, Crap, those are big numbers. And then you're like, okay, bed mass, bed mass. Okay, I got to do division multiplication in the order they appear from left to right. Okay, I can do that. Some people probably screwed up here and tried to do that first because D comes before M. But you got to do multiplication and division in the order they appear from left to right. So then you'd say, okay, 64 times, what was it, 1,000? Oh, I can't remember. 1,024 equals, and then divide that by. 4,096, and you got 16. The answer is 16. Could have done it that way, but it's much easier to use your sign laws and realize that when multiplying two powers with the same base, you can add your exponents. And when dividing two powers with the same base, you can subtract your exponents. And in a much, 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 much simpler way, without a calculator, you can get the answer of 16 using your sign laws. And the last question is a fairly complicated looking order of operations question involving powers. But without a calculator, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Let's do this together, shall we? Let's simplify all of our exponents. So we'll start with this, 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. 5 to the 3 is 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. 1 to the power of 10. Is 1 times 1 times 1. Well, that doesn't matter. It's just 1. Negative 2 to the exponent of 4 is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. 2, 4, 8, 16. It's a positive 16. So take away a positive 16. Plus, the last one, any base to an exponent of 0 has a standard form of 1, which is 1. So when you simplified your exponents, you end up with like a grade five question of order of operations with only one multiplication the rest are addition subtraction i'm going to do my multiplication first eight plus 125 take away 16 plus one 133 take away 16 plus one 117 plus one your final answer is one.